Hello developers. Today, we're building something really exciting, a navigation hover effect that looks stunning and interactive. In HTML, we'll structure the layout, setting up the elements needed for our design. With CSS, we'll bring it to life, styling the page, adding smooth transitions, and even layering effects for a sleek look. And in JavaScript, we'll power up the interactivity using GSAP for animations, mouse effects, and some creative logic to make everything feel dynamic and engaging. Here's what we'll be creating. A cursor following effect that dynamically changes its appearance. On hover animations that display a movie image. Animated text effects for movie titles. A background video that plays seamlessly. And more interactive UI enhancements. But before we start, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We break down complex UI effects into simple, easy to follow tutorials just for you. Let's start with the HTML structure. First, we include Bootstrap icons, a library that provides various icons. Then, we link our custom style.css file, which contains all the styling for this project. With the head section complete, we move on to the body section, where the actual content resides. The first element inside the body is a div with the class ball. This will act as the animated cursor effect that follows the user's mouse. Next, we add a div with the class video container. Inside this container, we place a video element. The video has attributes like plays in line, autoplay, muted, and loop. This ensures the video plays automatically, remains silent, and loops continuously. Within the video tag, we include a source element. This specifies the path to our video file and its format, ensuring compatibility across different browsers. Now, let's define the main section that contains our list of anime movies. We create a div with a class anime list. This acts as the main wrapper for all movie items. Inside this container, we add an H1 element with a class title. This serves as the main heading displaying Studio Ghibli movies. Next, we create an unordered list using the UI tag. This will hold all the movie list items. Each movie is represented by a list element. Inside each list, we define multiple div elements, each with a specific purpose. The index div contains a span element, displaying the movie's position in the list. The release year div also has a span that shows the movie's release year. The anime name div holds an H2 element. This contains the movie's title and a data value attribute, which we will use later for animations. The genera div has a span element that lists the movie's genre. We also have a redirect link div. Inside it, there's an anchor tag that wraps around an icon. This serves as a clickable button that links to more details about the movie. Finally, each list item includes a hover IMG div. Inside this div, we place an IMG element with a class of IMG fluid. This image will appear dynamically when the user hovers over the corresponding movie title. This structure is repeated for all movies in the list, ensuring a consistent layout. At the very bottom of the body, we link three JavaScript files. First, we include jQuery, a library that simplifies DOM manipulation and event handling. Then, we include the GSAP library, this is used for smooth animations throughout our project. Finally, we link main.js, our custom JavaScript file, where all interactivity is implemented. Using this structure ensures clean and maintainable code. The separation of concerns makes styling and scripting more efficient. Hidden elements, like hover images, are preloaded for better performance. And by using proper tags and attributes, we improve search engine optimization and accessibility. With our HTML foundation in place, let's move on to styling. All right, let's break down this CSS step-by-step, step, explaining each part in a simple and engaging way. First up, we have the font imports. These lines bring in two different font families, Roboto and Roboto Condensed, from an external font library. This ensures our website has a clean, modern, and professional look. Next, we define some root variables. Here, we're setting two main colors, white and black. Instead of using color codes directly, we're giving them names, making it easier to update the design later. Now, we apply global styling using the universal selector. We remove any default margin and padding from all elements, and set a box sizing rule that ensures padding and border do not affect the overall width and height of elements. 
For the HTML tag, we disable horizontal scrolling by hiding any content that overflows the viewport width. Moving on to unordered and ordered lists, we remove bullet points and default spacing by setting the list style to none and resetting padding and margin to zero. Next, the body tag. Here, we set the font family to Roboto condensed, making all text uppercase. The text color is set to white using the root variable. We also define the font size, line height, and font weight, ensuring text readability. For images with the class IMG Fluid, we make sure they never exceed their container's width while maintaining their original aspect ratio. For links, we add a smooth transition effect for all properties over half a second and remove the default underline. Heading 1, or H1, gets a massive font size of 100 pixels with a line height of 120 pixels. Meanwhile, Heading 2, or H2, gets a slightly smaller size of 22 pixels with a line height of 30 pixels. It also uses the Roboto font and capitalizes only the first letter of each word. Now, let's talk about the video container. This section holds a video in the background. We position it fixed to cover the entire viewport, stretching it to full width and height, and placing it behind all other elements using a negative stacking order. Inside the video tag itself, we make sure the video fully covers the container without distortion. Then, we add an overlay effect on the video container using the after pseudo element. This creates a semi-transparent black layer on top of the video, adding contrast to make text more readable. Now, onto the anime list section. We give it some margin and padding to space things out. The title inside this section is centered and made uppercase with a defined width to keep it neatly contained. For the list inside the anime section, we limit its maximum width and center it. Each list item inside the anime list gets some padding and a slight transparency effect, making inactive items look faded. When hovered, the opacity increases, making it stand out. We also add decorative horizontal lines using before and after pseudo elements. These lines are positioned at the bottom of each list item, with one being partially transparent and the other fully transparent by default. On hover, the fully transparent line expands to cover the full width creating a cool effect. Now, inside each list item, we use different widths to allocate space for the index, release year, anime name, genre, and a redirection link. The redirection link itself is styled as a circular button with a white background and a centered black icon. Next, we have the hover image effect. When hovering over a list item, a hidden image fades in slightly. This image is positioned absolutely and has a rounded border to create a smooth visual effect. Now, let's talk about the floating ball effect. This is a circular element positioned fixed on the screen. It has a unique glass-like effect using an inverted grayscale filter, making it look dynamic. Finally, we have media queries. These adjust styles for different screen sizes. As the screen gets smaller, heading sizes shrink, text becomes more compact, and layout adjustments improve readability. The hover image also resizes and certain elements like the index and genre columns disappear to simplify the mobile view. And that's a wrap. This CSS ensures a visually appealing, responsive, and interactive design. All right, let's break down this JavaScript step-by-step step, and trust me, there's a lot going on here. We're dealing with animations, mouse movement tracking, and even a cool text effect that brings a dynamic touch to the page. So let's get into it. First, everything starts inside this special function called document ready. This ensures that the script only runs after the entire web page is fully loaded. That way, we avoid any weird behavior where the script tries to manipulate elements before they even exist. Now, let's focus on the image animation part first. We begin by selecting all list items inside the anime list using the query selector all method. This gives us a collection of all the elements we need to work with. Then, for each item in this list, we execute a function. Inside this function, we do some preparation for the hover image effect. First, we set up a hover IMG element using the Greensock library, or GSAP. GSAP helps us handle animation smoothly. Here, we're using X% and I% properties to center the hover image relative to the mouse. Next, we grab the hover image and its inner image separately. These will be manipulated later as the user moves their mouse. Now comes the position tracking. We create an object called POS that stores the current X and Y coordinates of the image. 
Initially, we set this position to be in the center of the screen. Then we introduce a mouse object that also tracks the X position. Notice how we don't include the Y position here. That's because in this particular animation, we only care about moving left and right. A speed variable is defined next. This controls how quickly the animation follows the mouse movement. If the speed is too high, the image will immediately snap to the cursor, which doesn't look smooth. Instead, we set a value that allows a subtle delay, making the motion feel more natural. After that, we use Quick Setter from GSAP. This method allows us to update the X position of the hover image very efficiently, improving performance. Tracking mouse movements. Now, we need to update our position whenever the user moves their mouse. That's where we add an event listener to the mouse move event. Every time the mouse moves, we update the mouse.x property with the current X position of the cursor. But here's the really cool part. Instead of setting the position immediately, we use GSAPE's ticker. The ticker constantly updates animations in sync with the screen's refresh rate. Inside this ticker function, we calculate how much we need to move the image using an easing formula. This formula ensures that the image follows the cursor smoothly instead of jumping to it instantly. Once we have the new position, we update it using the quick setter function we defined earlier, determining mouse direction. All right, now comes the logic for detecting whether the mouse is moving left or right. We define a variable called direction and another one called old X to keep track of the previous cursor position. Then we introduce three new variables. Last cursor X and last cursor Y store the last known position of the cursor. Cursor threshold determines how much movement is required before we consider the mouse to be going in a specific direction. Now we define a function called mouse move method. Every time the mouse moves, this function checks whether the cursor has moved significantly in either direction. If the new X position is smaller than the old one and the difference is greater than the threshold, that means the user moved left. So we set the direction to left and rotate the image slightly counterclockwise. If the new X position is greater than the old one and the difference exceeds the threshold, then the user moved right. In that case, we rotate the image slightly clockwise. Finally, we update old X with the latest mouse position. So the next time the function runs, it has the correct previous value to compare against. Next, we need to reset the image rotation when the user stops moving their mouse. We do this using a custom event called mouse move end. Once this event is triggered, we reset the image back to its original state with no rotation or translation. To detect when the user stops moving their mouse, we use a timeout function. If the mouse stops moving for 100 milliseconds, we trigger the mouse move end event, which brings everything back to its default state. Now let's move on to animating the custom cursor. We start by selecting the ball element, which represents our custom cursor. We position it at the center of the screen initially, just like we did with the hover image. We set up another mouse position tracker, but this time we track both X and Y coordinates because the cursor should move freely in all directions. We define a movement speed of 0.08, making sure the cursor animation follows the mouse smoothly, but with a slight delay for a natural feel. Just like before, we use GSAP's quick setter method to efficiently update the cursor's position. Now, whenever the mouse moves, we update our mouse object with the new X and Y coordinates. Finally, inside the GSAP function, we apply the same easing formula to make sure the cursor smoothly follows the actual mouse movement instead of snapping to it. All right, time for the final part, the text scrambling effect. First, we define a string containing all uppercase letters from A to Z. This will be used to create a random text effect. Next, we select all list items inside anime list and loop through each one. Whenever the mouse enters a list item, we trigger a function. This function targets the H2 inside that list item. Here's the interesting part. We use set interval to repeatedly update the text. Every 20 milliseconds, we replace each character with a randomly chosen letter from our string. However, we don't want all the letters to change randomly forever. So we introduce a counter called iteration. As this counter increases, more and more letters revert to their original values, which are stored in a data value attribute. Once we reach the full length of the text, we stop the interval and display the correct word. This creates an amazing effect where the text appears to decode itself right before the user's eyes. 
And that's it. This script combines multiple animations and effects to create a visually stunning experience. We have hover images that smoothly follow the cursor, mouse tracking with directional rotation, a custom animated cursor, a dynamic text effect that scrambles and reveals text. Each part works together to create an interactive and engaging UI. Pretty cool, right? If you're loving this, we've got tons of cool tutorials on UI development and GSAP that you don't want to miss. From smooth animations to mind-blowing interactions, it's all here. So make sure to check them out and level up your skills. If you found this breakdown helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. There's a lot more to explore in the world of UE animations, and I'll see you in the next one.